What are your thoughts on this passage from Gary Taubes, author of The Case for Keto? Keto diets are based on the proposition that for those predisposed to become obese and or diabetic, carbohydrate-rich foods trigger that predisposition. That isn't because of the calories they contain, as the conventional thinking on obesity assumes, but because of the effect these foods have on insulin, the hormone that dominates the regulation of fat storage and fat metabolism. Insulin is secreted mostly in response to carbohydrates, not just in the form of sugars, starches, and grains, whole or otherwise, but also fruits and legumes, which are the staples of a well-formulated plant-based diet. A high insulin level signals fat synthesis and storage, and a low level, its release as free fatty acid back into the circulation, observed the Harvard University metabolism and diabetes researcher George F. Cahill Jr. in 1971 in the prestigious Banting Memorial Lecture at the annual meeting of the American Diabetes Association. This process is like a switch. When fat cells sense the presence of insulin in the circulation, as Cahill described it, they respond by storing fat and inhibiting its release, and we get fatter. When insulin is undetectable, we burn stored fat for fuel, and we get leaner. The metabolic state of ketosis, from which the keto diet gets its name, happens when carbohydrates are restricted almost entirely, and fat provides most of the fuel for the body. The hormonal insulin-centric regulation of fat storage and fat metabolism remains textbook medicine, yet its relevance to obesity has been effectively ignored by nutritionists and obesity researchers who have overwhelmingly preferred to think that all calories are equally capable of stimulating fat accumulation, that we get fat because we overeat, not because the carbohydrates we consume have some unique ability to stimulate fat accumulation. For some significant proportion of Americans, however, remaining relatively lean and healthy may require minimizing their insulin secretion. This, in turn, means more or less rigid abstinence from carbohydrate-rich foods. Animal source foods, meat, fish, fowl, and even processed meat, typically make up the bulk of this approach to weight control because they are almost entirely protein and fat with minimal carbohydrates. Until insulin was discovered in 1921 and insulin therapy was put to use in treating diabetes, these diets were known as animal diets. They were the standard of care for diabetes, delaying death in what today is called type 1 diabetes, the insulin-dependent form, and controlling the, the disease indefinitely in those with type 2, the common form associated with excess weight and age. This is still the case. So what are your thoughts, again, on that passage from Gary Taubes. That's quite a mouthful that he is offering there as far as the effect of carbohydrate uh, is concerned, you know, on insulin and therefore of diabetes and obesity, if you will. Uh, I under understand uh, his, his position on that. Um, it's, a, it's an old study. He's, he didn't do the work himself, but uh, I think the, the best way to address that rather complex set of circumstances is to point out first, they use the word, he and others in the keto business, use the word carbohydrate very loosely. Carbohydrate only found in plants, except for a tiny bit in animals, but we're, basically we're talking about the carbohydrate in plants. That's a, that's a very complex mixture of substances. Dietary fiber comes under that sort of umbrella, if you will. So the, the carbohydrate in plants is a variety of things. In the natural form, when we're consuming as whole food, we get a lot of fiber to go along with it. We're also consuming some other things that are really important, like the kind of protein, the amount of protein, antioxidants and minerals and so forth and so on. Um, and so when we're consuming a whole food plant-based diet, we're consuming a kind of carbohydrate that works well for reducing degenerative diseases. Any comparison of, let's say, different societies with respect to the consumption of carbohydrate, if we may, if we, you know, pay attention just to the carbohydrate of plants, it really works well. The problem with that argument that Gary Jobs and, and uh, Dr. Robert Atkins and a few others have made is that 
they tend to focus on the effects of refined sugar. That's not that's carbohydrate, but that's not the kind of carbohydrate we're consuming really when we're consuming whole foods. When we consume whole foods, we got the rather large complex mixture all working together. And even, even that, there's some evidence that if somebody suddenly switches from, let's say, you know, a, a high carbohydrate diet to a low carbohydrate diet, if, if you will, by replacing it with animal foods, we can see a reduction in body weight. We can see, you know, the, the ketosis sort of thing arise and that excites people. But the problem is the people are switching from a diet that is not whole food plant-based. They're switching from a diet that is really high in refined carbohydrates. Different ball game. Different ball game. What are your thoughts on this passage from Gary Taubes, author of The Case for Keto? When I started reporting on this subject as a journalist 20 years ago, virtually no meaningful research had been published to, the, to test the claims of the diet book doctors, most famously Robert Atkins, who advocated this way of eating. Since then, carbohydrate restricted diets, keto or otherwise, may have become the most tested diets in history. The website clinicaltrials.gov reports more than 100 clinical trials of ketogenic diets in progress and nearly 90 completed. The findings are consistent. Ketogenic eating is safe and effective at controlling both weight and blood sugar. Pick a disease from Alzheimer's and anxiety disorders to traumatic brain injury and tumors, and researchers somewhere are probably testing whether eating a ketogenic diet improves its prognosis. In 2019, the American Diabetes Association concluded that low carbohydrate and very low carbohydrate diets, that is keto, were the only diet, dietary therapies that consistently resulted in beneficial outcomes for adults with diabetes or prediabetes. In 2017, more than 100 Canadian physicians co-signed a letter to the Huffington Post declaring that they personally follow keto-like regimens and now counsel their patients to do so too. What we see in our clinics, these physicians wrote, is that blood sugar values go down, blood pressure drops, chronic pain decreases or disappears, lipid profiles improve, inflammatory markers improve, energy increases, weight decreases, sleep is improved, IBS or irritable bowel syndrome symptoms are lessened, etc. Medication is adjusted downward or even eliminated, which reduces the side effects for patients and the cost to society. The results we achieve with our patients are impressive and durable. So again, what are your thoughts on that passage from Gary Taubes? That entire argument, again, as I mentioned before, that entire argument is such that we have to ask the question, what are these patients? Who are these patients? What condition are they in? You know, naturally, they tend to be overweight. They are, they're they're uh, subjected to some uh, diabetes uh, problems, if you will. If those people consuming a kind of, they're, they're consuming a lot of carbohydrates, as I said before, refined carbohydrates are overweight. Okay, now you put them on, you know, almost just drop, change the diet, their total calorie intake goes down. Right, they're going to lose some weight. It's pretty consistent, like that those physicians may have noted. It's pretty consistent that that their patients lose weight. Impressive. Everybody buys it. That's not that's not the issue. Even serum cholesterol comes down a bit. Not that it makes that much difference. So you see these kind of things that look sort of promising in the short run. Lose everyone, everyone wants to lose weight. However, that message in the short run, like that, sort of. A, pharmacological approach, if you will, totally a nutritional approach, that if that were to be continued, what that means is those people on the low carb diet are consuming high fat, high animal protein diets. That's what in fact, in reality, that's what happens. Okay, so then you ask the question, what happens to those people over time? Over let's say years, how, how do societies compare? It turns out the greater the consumption of animal protein, the higher is the risk for heart disease. The higher is the risk for diabetes. 
the higher is the risk for cancer and a number of other diseases as well. As well. That's very clear. And there's a number, we call these correlation studies, you know, where the regression lines comes down, right down through the origin, the XY origin, saying any addition of animal protein tends to theoretically begin to increase the risk for those diseases. Exactly the opposite, what the, the uh, keto people talk about, exactly the opposite. So what they are doing, in my estimation, I, I know this is wrong words, they're doing a disservice. They're using short-term results to imply or infer to the population at large that look, we got to we got to decrease carbohydrate intake. That means plants. Let's increase fat and protein because that's what people like. It sells. That's the equation. That's that's the marketing. And so in the long run, when people do that, we have and there's no comparison. There's this is irreputable. So size that come consume more animal protein, animal fat, or animal foods, if you will, heart disease goes up. There's a number of studies that have shown that for 55, 60 years. And uh, so, and, and that's one, one side of the argument. The other side of the argument, too, is that when people who have, who have diabetes, they're switched to a whole food plant-based diet, right? That's a lot of more carbohydrate, right? But it's the right kind. It's whole food. More carbohydrate, not the refined carbohydrate, mind you, not added oil, but they're, you know, whole food plant based diet. Those people see a beneficial response within one to two days. So dramatic, so dramatic that, especially for diabetic, diabetics, if diabetics are on their insulin and they, are, they switch to this whole food plant based diet uh, and they don't stop their medication, the insulin reducing medication, the dietary effect on reducing insulin is so great that if, they're not, if they don't stop their medication, they can end up in hypoglycemic shock. So strong is that dietary effect. It's exactly the opposite of the keto people. The keto people are looking at short-term things that sort of in the short term look sort of impressive. It sells people, they will lose some weight. And yes, maybe the diabetes re relieved a little bit. However, that's not a solution for long-term health. Just simply, it's exactly the opposite. It's dangerous.